that's better. How's everybody doing? About to get it in. <laughs> Let's see what's going on out there. Let's see who we got. Let's build. Hey, peace. Hey, peace. So this is Linda, everybody. And we talk about money on this channel. And the money we're going to talk about today, the money machine we're going to have is not necessarily the conventional money machine. It's the juicer. Okay? That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about that real wealth. The thing that catapults you into making the paper fiat is the actual fruits and veggies. We're going to have that conversation today. So I've been working with Linda. And we got the juice business on fleek out there in Boston. Okay. We just got our kitchen officially. We're not letting none of this quarantine stuff slow us down because they're opening up the place. And if anything, the juice is in high demand. All right. And we got to make business partners out of ourselves. We have to support each other's workings and brilliance. So when you see somebody that's talented, you make sure you support them, you fund them, and we take it to the next level. So the first thing that we're going to do before we bang out and start sharing a whole bunch of information, because we're doing this for the purposes of motivating everybody and we're doing this for the purposes of educating everybody and letting you know that we're out here. The reason why I like these streams is because you could be out there feeling like you all by yourself. And then you come on the stream and you realize, there's some people, there's at least two people right here that feel like I feel. So a lot of times this is therapy to be able to be online and you can hear one or two amongst your own feeling the same way about health. So the first thing we can do, make sure that's right. Linda, I got it pinned to the top. Linda's Wellness, that's your Instagram, correct? That's me, correct. All right, y'all. I need y'all to make a concerted effort tonight and make sure that you follow Linda. We're going to be doing a lot of juicing streams. So what we're going to do, we're going to create Juice and Build Mondays. So I'm going to be on one side of the screen teaching, and then she'll be on the other side of the screen juicing. And we're going to do that on Mondays. So quite often you ask, what do you eat, Polite? What should we eat? And what quantity should we eat it in? Mm -hmm. So I can't do everything all over the place, but what I can do is multiply myself. So Linda will uh, vicariously, through me, communicate to you guys consistently on a Monday-to-Monday -Monday basis. But I'll be there probably about every Monday anyway. I'm going to be on that grind, but we're going to do the first one this coming Monday. We're going to juice, and we're going to go super hard. And with that juice, and it won't be the conventional, okay, this has vitamin A, this has vitamin K, juice it, and be like, what does that mean? No, we're going to go. Hard in the paint. We're going in. We're going in. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> We're going to drop that knowledge. So how you, how you got into juicing before we start going into everything else? How you got into yeah. that? Let's keep it up. <laughs> Absolutely. To me, it was more like, it was like a, a journey to recovery. So I want to say a few years ago, probably like six, seven years ago, I wasn't feeling well. I wasn't going to the bathroom regularly. I was breaking out. Just, just a whole bunch of nonsense. So I changed my I changed my eating habits. I changed the way I ate. I started eliminating certain meats. And then I wanted to focus more on what I was drinking. So soda was like completely always out of the equation. I wasn't going to fuck with soda no matter what. So I resulted <laughs> in just water and tea. Constantly water and tea. Mixing up different herbs, trying different teas. And, you know, I'm really into that. But that's a whole nother conversation. And I said, you know what? What about juice? So I went to the store, of course, shopping in the organic section, and I actually picked up a juice and I turned it around and I actually, I read it because now, you know, I'm, a, I'm on my healthy shit. So I'm reading the juice and I'm like, 7% juice? What, what, what the hell is this? And they adding all these extra ingredients to change the color, all the fructose syrup and 
all these artificial sweeteners. Like, no, I wasn't. I was not off that. I wasn't off that. And people come hard at people who juice because they're like, oh, my God, that's so much sugar. It's natural. It's a natural source of sugar. Do you prefer that or do you prefer all that extra shit that they <laughs> put in the juice in the stores? That's and, right. Like, these juicing companies, they put additives in their drinks just to give it shelf life. What the hell are they putting in the juice that it's actually on the shelf? For? We don't even know how long it's on the shelf. If that's organic raw juice, it can't stay on the shelf more than two to three days, period. So what are you really consuming? What are you drinking? You know what I'm saying? I definitely know. So, again, I just was like, you know what? Let me, let me do this myself. Let me do it myself. And it just, it just worked out. It just worked out. And it, it just, I love the taste, period, because I love the taste of nature. That's, that's right. I love the taste of nature. Celery, right. ginger, beets, all, I, that's, I love it. So it just worked out. And like I said, it just, it made me feel better. It hey, me uh, Mizzy, Mizzy La said, nigga, listening to her, proud as fuck. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> These are funny comments. <laughs> I like it. No, though, but for right. real, you guys, we have to focus on what we putting in our bodies. We can't trust these companies. <laughs> we don't know what the hell they putting in the juice, 7% juice. Sometimes it be staying 100% juice, and that shit ain't 100% juice. Point blank, period. How is it staying on the shelf that long? How is it really that color? Like, absolutely not. What's beneficial for, for them and for their pockets ain't beneficial for our health. So we got to put right. ourselves first. We have to put ourselves first. And and that's big. And so we also, we're going to, we're, we're co-authoring some work. We got the official juice book for our new covenant community and everyone outside of the community, of course. We ain't going to leave you out. And we have the official herb book. Because, you know, in our community, we have our own language. We have our own dress, right. code, or clothing. We have our own cultural regalia. We have our mm -hmm. cultural dishes. And we have our own library. I publish my books, obviously. You know, they, I'm going to make them open to the public right now. Only the people that's in my classes. They get the books because it's a textbook thing. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure we get the inventory to the right level because I have a lot of people in my class in itself. And mm -hmm. so uh, people generally buy four, five, six, seven books at a time. So I just revamped my publishing company. So this is Stocks and Blondes right here. This is a fire book right here, Stocks and Blondes. You know I come with the titles. And, of course, you know pennies off a million is. But, you know, I'm, I'm just excited. I'm excited because when you – publish your own works there's a certain level of pride there because i put hours upon hours upon hours of time into my works and the beauty is the people that produce my works are my people so people say why don't you just put it on amazon and then they can ship it out no i don't want to send other people's children to school i want to send my children to higher realms of education so i got buy the house sign the contract protect the asset no mortgage, no protest, no jurisdiction. I came up with paperwork. I wrote over 90 books. I wrote 96 books. But I got 17 up for the people that's in my class, and then two in particular that are definitely the textbooks that we're focusing on. Paper Terrorism, which is part two, to kill them with paperwork. So I got templates in there, everything from the vaccine template to homeschooling with the letter of intent there that you send to the Board of Education so you could do it legitimately if you don't want your children to go to public school. I got all sorts of things in it. So that's why it's called killing with paperwork here, the templates. If you need to slow down a foreclosure or potentially stop it, I got the template in there. All you got to do is put your name and your address and everything there. I show you where you got to mail it out. And boom, you get money. So I, that's the world that I'm in. I make sure I'm in a do-it-yourself world. <clears throat> Blood is sticking in water. People lie, but DNA doesn't. Okay? Ag Nation and American Terra Firma. This is for people that get busy with the politics so if some of this stuff sounds like what the hell are you talking about that's because it is <laughs> that's because of the bible right. this is our sovereign bible and let me show you something about the sovereign bible just so you can understand damn they don't want no one to get inside this book i might have to get one <laughs> they wrap my daughter wrap these things up but let me show you sovereign bible right let me show you how dope this is <clears throat> i'm just excited because this is one of the ways I make applicable my spirituality on the physical plane, and that's through the application of writing. So this is our flag, of course, but this is Sovereign Bible, and guess what? It's literally written in scriptural form. So you learn economics and politics, real things that you need to be able to do. 
to sustain yourself and advance your culture and or your family or yourself as an individual economically and how to organize and mobilize the people within your community politically. And it's written in scriptural form, so you can know in a chapter and a verse where I need to go over there to make sure I can make that bread. Because I always say we was as zealous as we was about religion as we are when it comes to our economics, our situation would, tra- would change. Because we know we have the highest populace of church members and institutions per square mile radius in lower income communities. <clears throat> it's a fact. It comes with the package. Liquor stores and churches galore. Low income community, black and Spanish people as they call it, all, all, all the same people. So at the end of the day, we got to fix that, but we got to realize it for what it means and what it represents. So here I had, where I talk about common customs, which is a calculus system that precipitates culture by process of differentiation, integration. We're able to find the value of smaller things and factorials of those equivalents, thus granting us the least adverse, least adverse effects from the decisions that we make. Of course, these are the lessons that when you're in the community, for those of y'all that want to be master teachers in the making, you got, you got to commit your lessons to memory. I'm not above or beyond reproach. I got to know the same thing. You know, we have our own language, Tadu. It means high, but it also means success because we watch Muslims get together and they say, Assalamu alaikum, wa alaikum salam. They say, peace be upon you, right? Mm-hmm. And they look like they've established a very important and necessary cohesiveness amongst themselves. We look at Hebrews, uh, Jews, I should say. Mm-hmm. They say shalom and they say peace when they greet each other. First thing they wish each other is peace. When you look at the Negro, right? Who they call niggas and who they call spicks. When you see how we do it and how we give it up, we say what's popping like something broke. We say what's cracking like something got destroyed. We say what up, my nigga, like um, slave masters. We say good morning, like morning is a good thing when you're mourning. You're crying. You're sad. There's nothing good about mourning. We say hello. And they taught us that hell is down there and heaven is up there. And whether that's true or false, subconsciously, you got hell is low. Mm-hmm. Okay? And so we look at all these different greetings and they're negative. And then we look at our community. And the question is, how powerful are words? Well, what I teach is words are our GPS to reality. So in our language, in Duasusu, which means living language, when we talk about sovereignty, now people can't talk about having autonomous control unless they at least control their language first. Because the language you speak is a signifier for who colonized you and still has a level of control over you when it comes to transmitting thoughts from one person to the next. Because when you have a culture, you have words, terminologies, and phraseologies that are exclusive to you in your community that can't even be translated properly from one language to the next. You have to really be in that culture and embody it. This is called syntax. So because we are in dire straits, we need our language. I fulfill that part, and it's up to us to keep adding to it. Two, we say tadut when we see each other, which means hi, but it's equal to the word success. Because when we see each other, we wish each other success. Yeah, right. We're going to invoke that positive energy when we connect with each other. You feel Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And when we say we see each other off, we say iluvu. Iluvu means perpetual success. So when you leave, I wish you perpetual success. I want you to be as successful as you was, if not sustain it, if not more, by the time I see you again. So the impact that may have on somebody on a psychological scale, we're going to run it through the test, but certainly it must be more powerful than what's cracking, what's popping, what up, my nigga, good morning, hello. <laughs> you, you walk with me? So our language is built on a lot of principles, and if you get a spectrum analyzer, you'll realize that the tones that we speak have corresponding colors that allude to what they talk about when it comes to the aura. But we can also go into the <clears throat> micro, micro beam. And, and see connections there because that's really where the aura springs from, your flora, because the good bacteria and the bad bacteria are made up of metals that have corresponding colors. So depending on how much of that type of bacteria you have in you, that constitutes most of the colors that we'll be able to see on a microscopic scale, provided you have the right technology at your disposal. So the human aura is real. We're going to talk about a lot of these things, 
in our upcoming juicing book. We're going to talk about a lot of these things in our upcoming yeah. herb book. Because she knows how to mix herbs in proper combination. What's this? The human body is made up of 102 minerals. We say get a hair mineral analysis and find out how high or how low your minerals are. And so we learn sea moss doesn't have all the minerals, but it has quite a bit. It's an algae. Mm -hmm. And so we say we couple that algae maybe with burdock and bladder racks that perhaps when you mix red algae, that, that's what sea moss is. Start calling it algae. It's important because sometimes we get away from what things really are. Because we say sea moss and then we don't realize it's algae. And that's important because we're gonna have a we're gonna have algae fast in there. We're gonna have radioactive radioactive treatment in there because we're gonna talk about what free radicals are. We're gonna talk about what antioxidants are. We're gonna talk about drinking drinks that Linda makes to repair the DNA that's made up of not just a berry but several berries because each berry corresponds with a healing faculty to repair tissue or DNA. Each berry does this, red berry, blueberry, blackberry. And then also outside the berry, we have to mix it up with ginger, which is made up of ginger salt, right? That is an agent that causes the anti-inflammation in the brain to go. What this means is when there's anti-inflammation, because it's a bioactive product. So when there's anti-inflammation, this means that the neurons have problems. When there's inflammation in the brain, the neurons have problems transmitting messages from one side of the brain to the next. <clears throat> so let's watch this. This, is, this could give birth to dementia and everything later on in the future. So let's watch this. And I didn't forget about the sea moss and the black racks and the burdock. So let's watch this. Uh, when we see a genius, we say, man, that person was just blessed like that. Mm -hmm. No, you actually <clears throat> are burdened by the inability for them to teach you properly. When you go to school, you're supposed to learn math, science, language, and reading. That's on the left side of the brain. Then on the right side of the brain, you're supposed to learn music, art, gym. This is the right side of the brain. It's emotions. Mm -hmm. Right? And so the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain are supposed to get sewn together per both of them being activated and then you realize the connection. And that creates a genius. Right. So I didn't create a situation where some people find it more conducive to live on the sun while other people say we have to block the sun. Sunblock. Mm -hmm. What you don't realize is that your umbrellas have BSM in it. Black synthetic matter. <clears throat> this is the lab created melanin. What you don't realize is that your sunglasses have BSM in it. Black synthetic matter. Okay, lab created melanin. What you don't realize is materials can't leave planet Earth <clears throat> like spaceships and satellites unless they're coated with black synthetic matter. This is called BSM. <clears throat> so I, I start to ask the question. Because you have what's called the Van Allen's belt, which is a thick layer of plasma that sets anything ablaze that's trying to, that's attempting to interpenetrate it to leave planet Earth. Mm. And the only way they can allow something to leave planet Earth is if it's coated with melanin, even if they had to create it in the laboratory. It's called BSM, black synthetic matter. So now I ask myself if you got to coat something with melanin in order to leave the planet, mm. then we must be star children. Right. Yeah, I needed this. I've been teaching and talking all day. I, I teach hours on day. So first thing that gets attacked is your lungs. For singers, <clears throat> for orators, because they got to do this, so they got to take in more air than normal. Mm -hmm. You combine that with not getting enough sleep as well. <clears throat> Two miles deep from the ocean, <clears throat> two miles deep into the ocean. So this is what I'm gonna to talk to you about, the water. <clears throat> Let me just leave it here for the aesthetics. So for the water, what time of day? Based on your circadian rhythm. <clears throat> Do you wanna drink that? You see this? I wouldn't drink this early in the day. This is 9.6. 
the alkalinity is so high. Too high for the morning. You don't want to start the morning off with a high alkalinity. You want to start at seven. As you get into the afternoon, the apex of the sun, where you're most active, <clears throat> into the uh, earlier parts of the evening, <clears throat> after 1030, you don't want to touch that. At 1030, your cells clock out, say, so we're not digesting stuff. We're going to just pack that stuff in the colon, put it in the small intestine. But we didn't clean it up. So, yeah, it's vomit on the floor. If we do clean it up, we're not going to clean the mop. So when we come out in the morning and the new shift come and they go clean the floor with that mop, guess what you're doing? You, you wiping the floor with that vomit mop. It's spreading all over the place. You're like, where is the smell coming from? Mm. So basically, it's circadian rhythm. Your heart beats its best around 4 or 5 p.m. Basically, it's circadian rhythm. You're ready to consume food, should you choose to, at around 9.30. Basically, it's circadian rhythm. You shouldn't eat later than 10.30. And if you do, it should be lighter or more water-soluble. Why? Because you're supposed to in, engage what they call breakfast. Break fast. You're supposed to break your fast. Break your fast. So you, should be, you should be fasting for at least 11 hours. So that's why 10.30 to 9.30 is your fast. The reason why so you want to... you say 11, I say 16. Say it again? I say you say 11, I say 16. You should be fasting at least 16 hours. If you could. I'm with all of that. I'm with all of that. Because it has its benefits when you go to distance. Your right. body's clock is like 10.30, we clock out. 9.30, we coming in. You don't have to eat. But what I would say is... You're taking the right water and the right fruit. We're going to go over that. So, to, so let me get back to the alkalinity. You don't want a high alkalinity at the top of your day because it compromises the integrity of the hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Right. It'll be hard to break down foods throughout the rest of the day, whether you feel it or you don't, because your water is way too alkaline in the morning. And mm -hmm. your body is like, yo, we're breaking down the last whatever's going on. We're getting ready to start the day. Exactly. Don't throw that alk high alkalinity there. Because now you're also going to get rid of the good bacteria that work in your favor. Because at that time of the day, they need to take a certain precedence. Mm -hmm. You need a certain level of acid. The good bacteria are acidic. They maintain an alkaline environment within themselves, but they themselves are acidic. So they are the acidity that you need. Okay, so this gets deep. Because people say alkalinity, alkalinity, but they don't talk about probiotics or prebiotics, the food that the good bacteria need to eat. And on top of it, that food itself is acid, like a uh, good bacteria called acidophilus. Acidophilus. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And you you had uh, intestinal or, or stomach issues at a time, and you started taking the probiotics, and you're a living testament. You, you feel what I'm life. saying? For real. <laughs> Literally changed my life. People be thinking that this stuff is a game, but it's real talk. So, what you're doing essentially is dealing with the mathematics of how the body works. So we call it holistic mathematics. That's the name of the book too, holistic mathematics. And then, you know, we always got another title there. There's always two titles. So holistic mathematics stipulates that, you know what? Since the body says at 1030, we're going to clock out. We're not going to eat no more food after 1030. The question is, when's the last time you ate? The reason why this is important because based on the last thing you ate and what it was, you set the stage for not being able to work at your most optimal level the day after. What does this mean? <clears throat> Let's do it. So one, we know we shouldn't eat after 1030. You'll start feeling different once you just follow simple stuff. Don't drink nothing too alkaline in the morning. Stay around seven, seven and a half. When you get to the afternoon into the evening, you can do your eight to your nines. Okay, once you get past 1030, lighten up on them high pHs again and go tread lightly because whatever went on in the day that's still there processing, right. let your HCL be what it need to be. So that's why you're going to take in probiotics in the evening because you get the right amount of acid. I know we hear the word alkaline, the higher the number, we get excited. Yes. Mm. But you've got to deal with the scales. You do need alkalinity yeah. more so than anything else. But the acid that you need, we have to be specific. And that's why I don't like seeing things like pH and let's we say potential hydrogen. I'm big on actually saying what we need and knowing why we need it. Mm -hmm. That's why the free radical 
antioxidant thing is damn near mythos in the community because no one really addresses what exactly is a free radical, what exactly is an antioxidant and how it helps us be able to repair our DNA. We don't have these conversations. And if you know you're going to be in front of computers and phones quite often, you need to level up and consume a lot of prominence because it'll save your DNA from being damaged. So if you know you're about to walk into a situation, whether it's ionizing or non-ionizing radiation, being subject to it for extended periods of time will inevitably cause tissue damage and DNA repair. I mean, DNA damage. So now you're going to need something to repair it. You're going to need antioxidants that come in there and donate electrons to unstable atoms that causes damage to the DNA and destroys tissue. That's what antioxidants are. They donate electrons to unstable atoms because when the atoms are unstable, what they do is steal the electrons from other atoms that are stable, and then they become unstable, and then they do it over and over, and it's a domino effect, and this causes oxidative stress, which causes inflammation, which causes DNA damage, which causes you to age, advanced glycation in, A-G-E, advanced glycation in. I do this shit spinning on my head backwards, eyes closed, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm really about that life. Mm -hmm. And this is life changing. So when people like, how do you remember all these things? Because I eat like I'm training for existence. I right. eat like I'm training for a fight. Because that's what life is. It's a fight. Oxygen is good for you and it kills you. You need glucose. Because insulin, which is a hormone, and hormones means instructions. Insulin, that's a hormone, gives instructions for your cells to open up their walls to allow blood sugar to go in to metabolize so cells can do what they were specialized and destined to do effectively. Mm -hmm. But that same blood sugar in the form of glucose that's so very important, that plays an integral role in your homeostasis, in osmoregulation, in your metabolism, it destroys your nerves when it's suspended in the blood, so it has to be hidden inside of fat. So whenever you have an excess amount of sugar, it turns into too much fat, visceral fat that goes behind the walls of the abdomen and causes it to protrude. So no matter how much sit-ups you do, no matter how much leg raises you do, you'll never have abs because eventually your abdomen gets deactivated like you're a pregnant woman. You don't see pregnant women with abs. But anyway, that's another conversation because it gets put inside the adipose. And uh, uh, it's stored in what they call glycogen inside of the pancreas until it's summoned to come out by way of glucagons that come from the liver to let you know that we need some more blood sugar. But if there's too much blood sugar in the bloodstream, then what's going to happen is the nerves get destroyed. And that's why diabetics can't even feel when they get cut. And then the next thing you know, they have to get their foot cut off or they got to get their leg cut off and they start getting numb because glucose destroys it. But what was I saying prior? I know exactly what I was saying. Life brings you much adversity. Mm -hmm. Life damages you. Life is a fight. From the time you was born, you was dying. You was given a false intimation that you was living because you was growing taller. Mm -hmm. So because you your height was growing, you thought you was living. But you were actually dying from the time you came into this world. <clears throat> now, in fact, 95 to 97% of your DNA <clears throat> is inactive until you die. <clears throat> Only 3% of your DNA is active in this life. So this means you only live 3% of your life. 97%, you have to wait till you die to live. And this is why they say they believe in life after death. Mm -hmm. If you believe in life after death, it's a testament that this is death and life comes after you see, I don't know if people want me to go on my bag, because I'd be on this type of time. But I just feel like I don't know better. I count my money, and I play the nigga role so I can live on planet Earth longer before they take me out. Mm. But what I don't like is how they've been lying to us about this virus and what to do. And, what, and in fact, they haven't really been lying to us per se. They just haven't been informing us properly. So, exactly. oh yeah, wear gloves and wear masks. You're consuming so much carbon dioxide, keeping the mask on. I see people driving in the car by themselves with the mask on. With the mask on? What's, what's the point of that? You're killing yourself out of fear. So anyway, we go back. 
Let's get let's hit the alkaline phase, hit the circadian rhythm. We know about the times and the hours of the day. So when you start your day off, guess what? <clears throat> you gotta start lighting that furnace. Mm -hmm. So what you may want to do is start your day with at least an apple, a pear, or a watermelon. See, you don't want watermelon in the nighttime because it generates fat from the sugar that's in the watermelon. You take that in the daytime, your body can break it down. Let's bring it back. I don't forget, I told you it's the way I teach. I'm gonna leave that right there and I'm gonna come right back. Don't forget, I didn't forget about papaya and why you should eat that in the nighttime. I don't forget these things. It's just the way I teach so I could have you like this. <laughs> so you never complete the point. I always complete my points. <laughs> I always complete my points. So now, we're gonna go into the evening and we're going to say this. We're going to, we, let's, let's get the papaya. We don't mind knowing that the circadian rhythm tells us that we shouldn't eat after 1030. But there was a question I asked earlier before I hit that papaya. And the question was, so if we do eat, what time did we eat? What did that food consist of? Reason why we need to know that according to holistic mathematics is because carbohydrates take one to two hours to convert into the energy that you need. Protein takes three to four hours to convert into the energy that we need. And fat takes five to six hours to convert into the energy that we need. So if I eat, let's say at 10.30, and I have the conventional plate of food that consists of carbs, protein, and fat, there's six hours of energy there coming in in intervals of two hours at a time. So if I eat at 10.30, 1130, 1230, 130, 230, 230, 430. So if I eat at 1030, I'm subject to surges of energy straight into 4 30 a.m. So I won't be sleeping right. And it'll probably cause me to snore, wake up with a lot of mucus in my throat, have insomnia. And a lot of times it's because the food you eat and is generating energy during times you should have what's called REM sleep. Now, REM sleep is your deepest sleep. Most of us don't get four stages of sleeping. So that's one of the stages. <clears throat> Real talk. And so with that REM sleep, that's the only way your endocrine system and its assessment from the data or the diagnostics that the central nervous system conveyed would understand how to prepare you for life. Remember we was talking about that? Life is a fight. This constant resistance taking place. Remember, we was talking about that. Mm -hmm. You can't work at your optimal level <clears throat> if you're not getting your REM sleep, which is around 30, 45 minutes at a time, and it keeps happening over and over. <clears throat> but we only get the first, second, and third sleep because right when we want to go into our deepest sleep, another surge of energy comes from the food we ate late. Yeah. So now we got to calculate, even when we eat in the evening, what is it that I eat? Because traditionally, the food is six hours. So when you look at a plate, you got to look at it mathematically and say, there's six hours on this plate. I can't afford to do that. <clears throat> Fat taking the longest to convert into the energy that you need. Protein taking the second longest. And carbohydrates, which is tricky because nature's not really in conformity with carbohydrates. Carbohydrates is carbonic acid. And the first thing it does is it the lungs so you consume enough of it. I didn't say too much enough of it because <laughs> a little bit is too much that's another conversation for another time so now what we're going to do with this is say hey if i eat at 10 30 energy is going to be surging straight in through 4 30 a.m based on having all three of those things on my plate so first thing we got to do is start saying how do i close my night because you need to get the REM sleep that you're being disturbed from because of the last meal that you had on account of the fact and that's even if you stop eating at 10 30 so it's not enough to stop eating at 1030. It's what do you eat at 1030 to secure your REM sleep because your endocrine system, which regulates hormones, hormones are instructions. Just like when puberty comes in, your hormones is racing. Instructions are racing. Hormones at puberty is giving instructions to the body to turn you into an adult. Oh, you got to start having sex. We got to get you prepared to have feelings that you would have as an adult gradually. Hormones give instructions. Hormones are instructions. Uh -huh. So in REM sleep, 
That's when the diagnostics per the central nervous system is conveyed to the endocrine system. The endocrine system says, for whatever reason, this nigga need a twitch. He got a he got to move. He's a boxer. So you get instructions so you can endure the affliction and so you can have the twitch, the reflexes to move because for whatever reason, this particular human being, this particular human being needs these instructions to get him through the day because when we compare his day to his week and his week to his month and his month to his year, for some reason, it doesn't contradict. This is what he needs. <clears throat> if you don't get your REM sleep, you'll never perform at optimal level. People that constantly train over and over and over again, they get their REM sleep because they're so exhausted. Yeah. And therefore, they wind up becoming better because the data is conveyed to the endocrine system. And it only the endocrine system can only work at its best when you're in your deepest sleep. If you don't get REM sleep, your endocrine doesn't give you the best instructions to. They don't load up on the instructions you would need for the next day. If you don't get your REM sleep and you laugh a lot, you say, oh my gosh, it's so funny. And all these endorphins and everything is great and, and, and oxytocin, you just having a good time. I laugh, my cheeks is hurting and I'm crying. If you don't get your REM sleep tomorrow, you be depressed and you just have a whole mood swing because your body didn't get a chance to reload. So you can have a mood swing uh -huh. just because you ain't get your REM sleep. This thing is deep. It's going to be in our book, though. But it gets deep. It's going to be super deep. It's going to be super deep. But in the daytime, you'll take the watermelon, the pear, or the apple to start your day. <clears throat> Interesting enough, women don't want the pear shape. I love the pear shape. I don't care if you got small titties. But you gotta have a big butt. This is interesting to me. I'm an original black man. I believe all original black men feel like this. But that's another conversation for another time on a more rapid uh, programming. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Health and women, wellness. <laughs> a lot of women don't want to have the pear shape, as they call it. What does this have to do with anything? Because mm. you should start your day off with at least a watermelon, a pear, or an apple. What about the watermelon? We don't want to feel like no damn slaves because the white man gave us watermelon during slavery. <clears throat> and we saw all these funny cartoon depictions of niggas spitting out seeds mm. that were slaves from consuming watermelon. So we got a stigma psychologically. Subconsciously, we don't want no watermelon either. And then the apple, the dreaded apple, the apple from the Garden of Eden when the devil beguiled Eve and made her sin and they ate from that forbidden tree of knowledge when it was told you should not know good from evil, all of that. So subconsciously, no matter how much they said that after a day keeps the doctor away, you was looking at that Bible like, how can I be taught that an apple causes confusion and didn't really want to eat an apple? So you look at that apple, you look at the pear, and you look at the watermelon, the three best things you could start your day with, because these are different forms of water. When people say, oh, you drink water, and I mean, I'm like, I'm drinking water right now. I mean, I'm. Mm -hmm. fruits, <clears throat> fruits and vegetables are apples in different forms. You got to understand what's going on planet Earth. A lot of your drinks are less water than the fruit or the vegetable you have. I'll give you an example. Watermelon is about 91% water, 92, granted. A cucumber is 96% water. You go beat a nigga's ass with a cucumber. Uh -huh. It's 96% water. So you know when you get that juice that says 5% juice and you go, what's the other 95? This shit look like it was, it, well, sure, it's definitely liquid. But this is poison. It's only 5% exactly. juice or 5% water. So you wonder what the rest is at. So flip that around and think about a cucumber. It's 96% water, 4% something else. So Taking in water is not exclusive to it being in a glass bottle. Glass bottle to preface, not plastic. And when Linda makes her juices, she gives people the option. Though she suggests glass, you glass. know, some plastic. I mean, I drink out of the glass. That's why I provide people that option. But glass or plastics, your preference. 
but I'm drinking out of glass. I hear that. Glass in my steel straw. <laughs> That's right, or copper straw. Yep, save the turtles. We don't do plastic over here. <laughs> they may think we just nerding out. <laughs> <laughs> they think we nerding out. It happens. But let's go back. So the watermelon, the pear, and the apple is dreaded subconsciously. And these are the best things we can start our day with. We don't really want to close out the day with them. And then we got to get real deep. We got to have a class on what sugar actually is. Because the sugar and vegetables tell you the yield. The sugar and vegetables say you had enough. You just feel like throwing up after a while. Like, I just had enough. The sugar and fruit doesn't tell you you had enough. The sugar and fruit just have you just... I love this. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. And so meat doesn't have that mechanism either. Only vegetables have a mechanism where it's a certain sugar. It just says, yeah, enough is enough. Why is that important? Because if there's a mechanism in the food that tells you enough is enough, you won't overindulge. So vegetables are designed to have you not overindulge, but then you got to watch yourself with every other food on the planet. Right. So what does that mean? And then some of us are a little better as vegetarians. We get about 70-something, and then we're in our upper 70s when we're vegans, but sometimes our world is small when we become vegans. All of us, can all we eat is pasta and french fries and shit that's just not meat. So most is not meat is healthy. That's what we think. And then we think we can eat any vegetable, but not every vegetable is good for us. Just because it's a vegetable doesn't mean it's good. So we go through all these different experiences, and it's growing phases, and that's why we want to do these juicing Mondays, juice and build Mondays, so you can gradually get it. Get the book and you read. You get the herb book we coming with, holistic yeah. mathematics, juicing we coming with, our line of alkaline cookbook we have already done. But you need the videos for the demonstrations to see how is that thing cut? Or why is it cut that way? What do you put in first? And then what combination? So when we go to the CMOS, the reason why we're including that red algae, which is sea moss, but I'm going to call it red algae just so we got it. We take this red algae, sea moss, and we combine it with burdock and we combine it with bladder racks so we can access 102 minerals at best. And if we're lacking in that, we get some blue green algae and add to it, and we definitely seal the deal, E3 live. Okay, so now, and then if you really want to go in, you get you some kelp brown algae. You get you some sea moss red algae. Okay, and then you get some E3 live, blue green algae. And you can go on a fast with red, blue green, and brown. I know you never heard these things unless you heard it from me. Mm -hmm. Because I'm meticulous. What is this? Is this algae? Is this a root? Is this a, what is this? I need to know, and I need to know why, what's going on. You're going to get the most. You're talking about protein. You guys can get enough protein. You're going to get the most vitamin C, vitamin A, protein, and it with sea moss. We need to know these things. Otherwise, just because sea moss is good and just because bladder racks is good, we take any amount because it's good. It becomes bad. Hydrogen is flammable and poisonous. Oxygen is flammable and poisonous. But when mixed in the right combination, it constitutes a water molecule called, well, water that sustains life. So even though oxygen is flammable and poisonous and hydrogen is flammable and poisonous, when we give it the right combination, the right chemistry, it constitutes a molecule that we call water that sustains life. So we can't just take food just because it's good mix it up with each other and think we're going to get great results. You have to be calculative in your execution. That kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. And our whole life, what we've been doing, our whole life, we've been winging it. And then, yo, why God had to do this? Well, God had a special plan. Man. No, nigga, you just making shit up. You put a plate a food before yourself and the rest of your family and never considered the mathematics behind that food. You never considered the time of day they eat it. You never cons considered if there was any iron in that food. 
that you cooked that's meat that when you cook meat that's high in heme iron that it becomes carcinogenic which means cancerous the more it's heated up so carcassoids oftentimes want their food oxymoron medium rare so it doesn't sound like they're eating blood meat because it's healthier to eat it that way because the more you cook the meat the more cancerous it becomes so we want iron from vegetables called iron fluorine because the iron in meat is called heme iron look up anything i'm saying and you it's right there let's, talk about, let's talk about b12 as well Oh How does man! That coincide with the iron. Let's talk about that. That's a good. That's a good one right there. Thank you for the alley oop. Thank you for the behind the backpack. <laughs> they have you thinking that you iron deficient, but you're not iron deficient. You can look like you're iron deficient because your body's not using the iron that's available. Right. If a doctor tells you you're iron deficient, if a doctor says you're anemic, if a doctor says here's some iron pills, I'm going to ask you this. Did your doctor check your B12 count? Because you can't process, assimilate, synthesize, or absorb iron properly unless you have the right amount of B12. You may not even be anemic per se. You might just have B12 deficiency, so no matter how much iron they give you, it registers as you don't have enough iron in your body because you're not taking enough iron, even though it's available. Exactly. Thank you for that this question. Super important, guys. Super important. Super important. They tried telling me your iron's going to be thrown off, trying to scare me and my physical because I don't eat red meat. Oh, you don't eat red meat? Oh my gosh, your levels are going to be off. And give me a break. And let me say this about the red meat since we build it. <clears throat> red meat is a lie. Meat isn't red once oxidation takes place. Meat turns brown or gray upon oxidation. When oxygen hits meat, it turns brown or gray. They pump meat with carbon monoxide so that it can have a red hue in order that they're able to sell it. Because subconsciously, if you saw brown or gray meat, it would look spoiled. It wouldn't look appealing. Right. So they put poison in the form of carbon monoxide into the meat to give it its red hue. Because if you know science, once the meat oxidizes, it has to turn brown or gray. So when they talk about red meat, there's no such thing. Hmm. Unless someone did some manipulation. And speaking of manipulation, that's why we don't like hybrids. We don't want to deal with hybrid foods like that. Most of them on the planet have good intentions. And by good intentions, you may say, so then what's wrong with good intentions? The road to hell was paved with good intentions. So no matter what the intention was, if nature didn't create it, in essence, it's missing something. And despite the good it may contribute, it's that percentage of bad that may afflict us the worst. And so I'm never a fan of rape. And the rapist is the therapist. And we have that conversation at another date and time. But I'm not a fan of rapist. Spelled the same way. The rapist, therapist. The rapist. Okay? Because the therapist wants to sit there with you and date rape your ass, give you some drugs so it's easier to talk to you the next time around. But that's another conversation for another time. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of rape. Many of you are. <clears throat> How does a plant from Europe Fuck a plant from Africa. See, they, they do slick shit and call it cross-pollination. But these plants don't got legs. Hmm. So that's plant rape. Okay? And so what it produces oftentimes implicates 
the people that consume it. When you take the female marijuana plant and mix it with a female marijuana plant, when you mix a male marijuana plant and mix it with a male marijuana plant, it's still homosexuality. And you can play and fight for people's rights because they're humans, so I understand it. We shouldn't disrespect or kill people because of their sexuality. But I ain't consuming no homo plants. I want to know, when the people started crossbreeding marijuana plants, did they take into consideration the gender of the plants? And how this new creation would affect you? I don't want to hear shit about, oh, this is hardball cookies, and this is and I don't want to hear shit about none of that. I want to know what was the gender of these plants and what constituted the cross-pollination and or the rape before you feed it to our people and lower their estrogen levels. Hmm. You see, I'm tripping. Because we don't want to be scientists. We want to randomly eat and smoke anything without giving it any thought. Hmm. I'd be somewhere different with this. That's why I just like to talk about money because I'd be damned if I have an uneducated brother or sister laugh at me like they do when I start talking this talk. I just, yo, you can keep self you want, but I know one thing. If you were alive for 20, 30, 40 years, I got some powerful stuff to tell you to you. You've never considered what proportion to eat that food. What was the mathematics of that food? You never consider, okay, carbohydrates takes one to two hours to convert to energy. Protein takes three to four hours to convert to energy. Fat takes five to six hours to convert to energy. If I eat at 10.30, I'm going to be having surges of energy straight to 4.30 a.m. I'm not going to get my REM sleep, which is going to compromise the integrity of my endocrine system to take the data from its assessment, from the diagnostics, from the central nervous system to prepare me per my hormone slash instructions for the day I'm going to have based on the day that I did have, how to make me behave or respond to adversity at my most optimal level. Because our whole life, it was just I still rice and peas, jerk chicken, hard dough bread. Some niggas is frying blood. I know about you Spanish niggas out there. I know what you're doing out there. I know it's good <laughs> last summer. I know what you're doing. Okay? And, and you know, you're frying blood and you cook it in. It's delicious. You eat big tail pig ass and all that other stuff. I get it. My grandmother used to take the pigtail and boil it in the rice and give it a nice salty flavor. I loved it. I won't lie to you. We ate pig every New Year's. We ate fish every Friday. In the name of Christ, whatever that means. <laughs> well, I sell rice on Sundays. We were poisoned every day. And not once did we consider why do we need this in this proportion? Mm. If you just eat anything, it would don't question why am I eating these things? Anything can happen. Is that exactly. simple? If we eat in calculation, we have the right to anticipation. You don't have the right to be mad that you have cancer or your family does. You don't have the right to be mad that you have diabetes or your family does. You don't have those rights. You never made any calculations to have any anticipation. You never took a C-reactive protein test. You never took a hair mineral analysis test. You never took a food sensitivities test. You never took an A1C test until you had diabetes. You didn't give a damn about your blood sugar until you had problems with your blood sugar beyond repair. And with all the bullshit that they give you, they're going to give you insulin when insulin is your problem. That's how we, that's how we dealing with diabetes. Really? Insulin is the issue. <laughs> You're going to give me insulin? And when you give me insulin, which are instructions for cells to open up their walls to allow blood sugar in the form of glucose to go inside the cells to metabolize. But then when you have diabetes, it's an insulin resistance. So then it becomes like alcohol. You keep feeding me this insulin. I build a resistance, and when I used to get drunk on two shots, now it takes four. Then it takes six. But now I get a little violent as I drink. I'm not quite drunk. I'm just violent. This is what disease do. Now they feeding you insulin when you're insulin resistant. Why don't they tell your ass to just fast? Because you have what's called insulin growth-like factor. And you have insulin. When you eat, insulin produce. When you don't eat, 
insulin growth like factor produce. If you fast, you get a chance to lower the resistance. Intermittent fasting will help cure that shit. And yeah, then you, walk, you take higher volumes of copper. I mean, pardon me, chrome. Because your pancreas is made up of chrome, like your heart is made up of gold, like your liver is made up of silk. I don't be playing games. I'm tired. I'm tired of playing with people, yo. <clears throat> yeah, I be really on this type of time, and people be wanting to be about gossip and all this. And that's why I can't entertain it. I didn't just learn this stuff last night and say, yo, let me try this out on people and see what happens. <laughs> I try it out on me. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. Hey, what's up? What's up, your internet, boy? You gotta get that right. It's getting it's getting a little foggy over there. Really? Yeah, I'm getting blurry visions of a beautiful woman. I think I'm dreaming. I don't know. My shit looks clear to me. Of course, because you got a good phone and nice camera. On this side, <laughs> it's just not gonna look like that. I don't know. I have my Wi-Fi. Can you see me better? I can still see you. You feel me? Oh, it's getting... It's almost clear enough. Now it just looks like it's a little wet. Hold on, let me see something. Yeah. But if you want to get this built. Can you see me better? Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's a lot better. Oh, okay. It's a lot better. So let's so, get back into it. Let's talk about fasting because I think that's super important as well. That's true. And of course, you be fasting. How long you be fasting? I do the sixteen eight fasting. To me, that's that's the easiest one. And I feel like if people want to get on this fasting kick, that's definitely what they should try. What that basically means is you don't eat for sixteen hours and you eat for eight hours. It's super easy. <clears throat> what I do is I don't eat past seven o'clock at night, and then when I wake up, I don't eat until after twelve. It's the easiest thing. Mm -hmm. Say that again. That's dope. Talk, it's talk to them. Teach. It's the sixteen eight fast. It's super easy. I feel like you should definitely try. It. Everybody should definitely try. It. Start there. If you want to get into fasting, start there. The sixteen eight fast. And how do they do it again? What's the time frame? Let's let's make sure they. I answer. mean, so it's a sixteen eight fast. You you guys can choose however you want to do it. You just don't. How do you do it? Because we I need some numbers. Fast, I, I don't eat past seven. And, and then, then when, when you I do eat, up, I won't eat till like 12. You don't eat past seven. And mm -hmm. then when you do eat, you don't eat until about 12. Till noon. And you got about an eight hour window to get your food in. Where I, where I do eat. And of course, I got to incorporate my juice in there somehow. Mm. Yo, listen. <clears throat> listen. I know I did a lot of talking tonight because I got excited mm -hmm. and she let me go because she know how I be, I be going off. Let you, I <laughs> but, just let you do your thing. <laughs> yeah, and I appreciate that because when a person has a lot of knowledge like yourself and because she be like, yo, I be listening. I love how you teach. <laughs> I be like, yo, you got to say something too. Mm -hmm. She be like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get in there, but yo, when you go in, you be going in and I don't want to stop the flow. I already had that conversation before we did this. Mm-hmm. But I appreciate the love and the support. And this journey that we are on is a phenomenal journey. And I want everybody else to participate in this journey. I mean, I was only taught by the best master healer on the planet, Dr. Sabi, directly. You know, this is the man that stayed in my home. This is a man who my children identified as grandpa. This is a man who said, it's on my Instagram. I fly from out the country into the country just to catch Brother Polite's class. This is a man who in his lecture referred to me as a, his superhero. Mm. And this is a man that has just blessed me, man, with so much. I got to get out of this conversation. I get emotional. <clears throat> he has blessed me quite a bit. And it means a lot to me that someone like yourself Linda will help perpetuate this mission, take it on, because he always talked about the significance of women contributing. 
mm-hmm. to the movement. He always talked about how he cures AIDS, but when his child gets a cut, his child screams for mommy. <laughs> he was like, yo, he thinks the child's coming to him and under his arms go straight to the mother. And he said, that child is more in tune than I am. Mm. And he said, the healing is truly for the women. We do our thing as men. We boastful. We, we put the aggression out there. We go hard. But at the end of the day, I want your hands on the vegetables. I want your hands on the fruits. I want your innate ability, innate ability to nurture, to give support, to give healing. I want that healing modality infused into the food for my consumption. And that's why I said when you juice for me, it is like it's sex, it's spirituality, it's metaphysics, it's everything. Because I know that the person doing it cares about what they're doing. And so that's a big part of the healing is the intention behind the person that's composing the food. Mm -hmm. Right? And so beautiful people with beautiful intentions producing opportunities for healing is something that we have come short of in our community as far as appreciation is concerned. Make sure you guys follow Linda's Wellness because that's where we're going to be doing our classes. We're going to jumpstart the juicing classes. We're going to spread it out on the internet because that's our world, so we're going to keep it in that matrix. And I can't, I, again, I can't stress it enough. I'm super proud of your zealousness. I said, go out there and find this out storefront and get the ball rolling. You not only did that, you got the equipment <laughs> upgraded to the laptop. We waste and... no time, baby. No time. No time. That's anymore. right. And you're now taking it to the level of working on your first publication. And that encouragement is everything. We need to encourage the sister right here. She's an amazing sister. And coupled with her beauty is the reason why we should support. Because she is a beautiful woman that can be distracted by superficial things and opportunities on planet Earth that's always being presented to her. But instead, she's concerned about healing. And you don't really find that often in people that have her type of disposition. You find distraction. You don't find her business acumen, not women of her caliber. So that's why it means a lot to me because Dr. Sabi was on that type of time. He was on that vibe. Mm -hmm. He was on that. He was on that. Like, yo, you see a beautiful woman. And the thing is, our qualification for beautiful has everything to do with health and healing. So it comes from your disposition, how you communicate. When you're talking, when you're not talking, it's how you communicate that we were able to make a determination about the abilities people had, or the potential at least, whether they demonstrated it or made it applicable or not. But the fact that you have it and you're making it applicable is important to every and any movement. There's a lot of movements out here. And movement is all about motion. But what good is the motion if people can't see their ankles? There's a lot of movements out here. But how much are we really going to be able to move if the people in the movement are crippled by health conditions that were birthed exclusively or mostly in part due to poor consumption habits? So this might be a soft stream for some of you and a reality for most of you. That is not a game. Juicing is not a game. This is real. And we got to deal with it mathematically. So we can get results that we're looking for head on, directly, and realistically. You can't sit here randomly taking good food and expect good results. It just doesn't work like that. Knowing that something most likely is good for you is the first step. Mm -hmm. Knowing in what proportion to take it or in what combination. And in what time to take it, based on your own diagnostics, your own 
How much is your body weight? So you could take half of that and know how much water to drink. This is holistic mathematics. Right. You feel me? Like, this is not a game. We, if, we, if you want results, there's a math right here that exists so you can get the results you specifically need. I got the holistic mathematics course coming. We'll deal with yoga by Linda. She'll, she'll yes, show you the that's yoga. That's super important, you guys. Not just your diet. You have to focus a lot on your mental health as well. And for me, yoga has changed my life indefinitely. So if you guys don't do yoga, you should definitely try to try to do that as well. That's a fact. Remember, we ain't going to use the word try. The same sentence works without it. You should mm -hmm. definitely do it yourself. Yes. <clears throat> same you guys, you well. hold a lot, of, a lot of emotions in your hips. Stretch your hips out. Get into mm. that pigeon pose. You hold a lot of emotion in your hips. Talk that talk. <laughs> talk that talk I'm telling you I'll go to class stretch my hips out get emotional sometimes start crying it's good it's it's actually really good and we all need that we all need that time Damn. to meditate meditate as well walk out of yoga feeling a lot lighter it's important it's important for your mental health they like come on girl <laughs> they, they feeling that I'm gonna start <laughs> posting I'm gonna start posting more we're gonna get right Yes, you definitely are. I'm going to be on your case. And everybody, you need to get on her case because she's sitting there with loads of information. And her, one of her highest forms of communication is application. She could show you better than she could tell you. I could. <laughs> <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? She could show you better than she could tell you. She's an excellent communicator. But when she gets to showing you, she'll show you the way I talk. That's how she moves. So she gets into the yoga, she's in her personal space. She's in her bag. That's her playground. It and is. brothers, no another matter how- one my, Another one of my zones. My first zone's in the kitchen, the next zone's on my yoga mat. Well, you just gonna, we, we, got, we, got, we gotta do all of that. We gotta do all of that. We gotta make that happen. We gotta make that happen. I'm glad we got one of them things out the way. Yes. But make sure you guys are in Boston, you check her out, or Rhode Island. Get those New juices. England. I'm in New, New England. England. <laughs> get those juices, you know, but we're going to extend it beyond the states because I told you I'm serious. I'm nation building right now, you know, and though we are on this mission right here, mm -hmm. we're also creating opportunities for other brothers and sisters to open up the stores. We fund them and you guys you get your business going and you do something that contributes to the better good of our family because the goal is to intercept the negativity. The goal is to slow it down. Just like the neurons have something impeding on its ability to send correspondences from one neuron to the next, is what's happening on a macro scale. That's the micro, this is the macro scale. Mm -hmm. We can deploy members of our community. We could deploy our members into the community for the purposes of healing nationwide and internationally. And no one be the wiser because it just looks like juice. And I know it's just like just juice, but listen, no, way our diseases that. come from what we've been eating. But this exactly. ain't just juice. Because you, gotta be, juice. you guys gotta be skeptical. You gotta be skeptical. You can't trust these people. You can't go to the store buying these juices that you don't know what the hell is inside of it. You just can't. This is a serious movement. I don't play games when it comes to this health movement. Me either. You, you know, already know. <laughs> I compromise my health for the health movement. That's the paradox. I, mm. I, I don't get to sleep because I'm always working. Like I said, all these different books here, I'm, I'm blessed. Wait till you see Linda's Juice book coming out that we're working on in the Herb <laughs> We doing the herb book, the juice book. Holistic mathematics is the herb. I mean the juice book. Holistic mathematics. We gonna put it all together, man. It's just a blessing. I feel good. Don't worry. The books are coming out for you guys, for the yeah, general public. I was just making sure the people that's in my class, for the for the Wall Street class, damn near the stock market class. I was just making sure that they can get their books and stuff first. Because we're not doing class this Sunday, but next Sunday, 
you go to brotherpolite.app to get into that class and make that bread. Because I don't want to hear excuses about how to eat this way, it costs too much money. That's why I create the whole package. I'm going to teach you how to make money so you don't have to be cheap on yourself. We should not be cheap on our body. We need to be loyal to ourselves. Everybody talks about loyalty. This Be loyal to your damn self. <laughs> Real talk. Right. Real talk. I'm just, I'm just super proud of you. I can't tell you enough. I'm blessed to have met you and been taking this journey for this time with you. To, for it to evolve that. and for it to materialize and come into fruition at this level. Uh -huh. Man, I'm so blessed. A lot of things to be excited about. Yes. You know, I'm proud to be a teacher and, and more proud to be your supporter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm even more proud. I'm a fan of yours. <laughs> you know? I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Word. You're doing great. This is a powerful thing. And um, I pray that this behavior becomes contagious and other young brothers and sisters follow your lead and, and create their business doing things that they love that right. empowers our community simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. 12 midnight Monday, you should be able to see the books. If not, then definitely Tuesday. But right now, if you're in class, you know where to get the books. I just didn't promote it to the world yet because when that happens, it gets ridiculous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure. Because I got them stockpiling and getting it all together because that's how it was when I was doing it last. And the information in this time is more necessary than it's ever been before. <laughs> Somebody wrote the damn thing on the site. <laughs> Come on, please. How you even knew it? <laughs> I didn't even give that to the students, the new site. But anyway, what the hell, man? You could go. I don't Nah, I want you to go to the official site. I got one that's up for the people in class, but it's not the official one. So I don't want everyone going there and then we got to switch them over to over there. So if you've seen it, you've seen it. But if you didn't, you didn't. Great. I got I to I gotta compose myself. I got to compose myself. Because I want to represent what I do at best. So when I go to the world with it, it's one thing for the class, but the students is like, yo, just give me the books because the class is crack. They addicted to class. So that, it's, it's a decent page there. But what I got for the site, woo! I got, man, I got to present is probably because I want you to have a certain level of pride and respect and what you are part of. Because, again, we're nation building. New Covenant is back up and open. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? 1999 dues, all sorts of free information and opportunities, how to open up your own business, everything. We're doing everything step by step. Everything, anything we can teach you month to month to prepare you. That's what we are. Okay, I know y'all ready. I'm feeling it. We got our own community, and I need you guys to register to IamBrotherPolite.app. Register there and let me know what is it that you do, what skill set that you have, what can you contribute to the community. Do you crochet? Do you sew? What is it that you already sell? Because this is a community. We keep it in house, and we keep our dollars circulating amongst each other. We employ our own. You know, when I, when I met Linda, I was like, yo, I'm an employee. Linda's one of my personal assistants. You feel what I'm saying? But I realized her talent. <laughs> I realized the opportunity, and I invested in her. Straight jacket. I, and she hasn't felt me yet. <laughs> I done made all my bread back, God damn it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, that's a sign of a great investment. You feel me? So right now, we just riding the wave, and we high off for life because the love and appreciation amongst each other is just our uh, bar none is unique, it's special. So that's what we'll be vibrating off of. But you know, she's my personal assistant. But we we don't take it on from that perspective where when someone hires you, all right, she's one of my personal assistants. So that way, none of my other personal assistants or secretary, anybody. <laughs> I can't. I can't be naming everybody. We got Alexis. Me and Alexis gonna go live and do yoga. I ain't even that's know right. she did that's yoga. Right. And I then I can connect with Melody. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, definitely. Shout out to Cartier. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My my personal yeah. assistant, uh, Cartier, she's phenomenal. <laughs> she, she gets the ball rolling. Highly trusted. You you feel what I'm saying? So we got a team. Our team is our team is lit. And the thing is, everybody loves each other and is connecting with each other and positive. positive, advice. positive everybody advice. got their own talent. 
starting six o'clock in the morning. Whoever sends the first text, positive vibes all day. Everybody's getting work done constantly. 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 Top of the day. Yo, you ready, boss? Yeah. What you, what you need, boss? End of the night. You need anything? Before we close out, I'm like, yo, they keep, that's why I'm able to do what I do. I'm great right. because they make me great. That's a fact. They, mm -hmm. they keep me on my joint. Yo, polite. Linda Proof reads some stuff. Yo, hold on, P. There's <laughs> some wrong, wrong sentence. I'm like, I'm embarrassed. You could lighten up a little bit. <laughs> but that's a gift. So I take the critique. It makes me great. So when I present myself before the world, I look better. That's her job. So she be on it. But like I said, I meet her. And what starts off with her just as my personal assistant flourishes. And that's why that's the point I was going to. Like, you don't just hire somebody to do a job for you. If they commit themselves and dedicate themselves to service to make you great, you got to find out what's going on in their world or what opportunities lie therein, whether it's for your own personal, immediate or exclusive benefit. Whether you both are, whether it's something that you both can mutually benefit from. Mm. Or it simply is, thank you for what the value you have added on to me. Mm -hmm. I see your talent. Let me push you forward to get that in. Because what was just a, a dream or an ambition for her, when I came through, I'm like, nah, we got to do this. Okay, that's great. I mean, now. Like, now? Mm -hmm. Like, yo, th this is what you got to do. This is what you got to do. This is what you got to do. But I'm working for you. Yeah, We got time for that. and We, we got to make time for you. You got to do this over here. <laughs> and then every day is like that. Every day it's like, yeah. yo. Yeah, I know I, I know I'm high maintenance and I got a lot of stuff that need to get done. But at the same rate, you know, we got to make sure that your situation is super dope because I can't be the only fly one in this circle. And Cartier would say the same thing. She would say, yo, polite, make sure I'm, my situation's lit. Because this ain't like the European conventional approach. We hire you and we don't give a F about you. Nigga, you got a 401k. Get out my face. It ain't that type of energy. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? I want to make sure everybody succeeds. So when they look at the whole team, there's no story. But how come that person's lacking? Right. And my graphic design guy, Daniel, love to head in there. What you make in a month at that job, you double, near, and triple. You're going to triple this month. That's a fact. But, <laughs> you know, that's what it is. That's what it is. We employ our own. And people can say what they say. But the proof is in the pudding because most black businesses are sole proprietorships. They only have enough money to feed their individual self. And we got to learn how to transcend that, how to create payroll for people, and not only create payroll for people, how to get insight about their talents. And at the very least, if you're not just going to give them the bread, invest in them and get your little percentage. They invest in you, you get the larger percentage, they get a small percentage, call the check. We go the other way around. I invest in you, you give me a small percentage, you get the bulk of the check. And that's reciprocity. That's how we become benefactors mutually. You okay? So. It's powerful, people. I want y'all involved. We grow in a whole community. And the dollar circulates because after a while, Linda needs some graphic design done. <clears throat> Daniel makes the money. Okay? And then I need something done. Linda provides it. So the thing is, the dollar wind up circulating. Working. Everybody's working. Yo, everybody got talent that the other person needs eventually. The guy who builds the website, the guy who does the graphic design, the person who's doing the juice bar, the brother who writes the books, we is, we all need the graphic design guy all over again to do, to do the covers for the books. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? The graphic design guy got to do the covers for the book. So we keep it circulating. So I love the brother Daniel. Me too. You know, I love brother Jared. I, I love what they bring to the table because it enhances our experience. You know, I love everybody on the team. It's just a powerful vibe, yo. I'm I'm vibing high just thinking about it. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you, sure. guys. For sure. Make sure you go to the Brother Polite app. I am Brother Polite. App. Go to I am Brother Polite. Spell my name right. P-O-L-I-G-H-T. Pride, optimism, love, integrity, talent, honesty, and trust. P-O-L-I-G-H-T. Brother, spell it the right way. B-R-O-T-H-E-R. -E go to Brother Polite. Dot app. That's the website, not an app. It's the website to the app. <laughs> okay? App not done yet. Go to brotherpolite.app. You buy the course or you go and you register. 
and let us know when you register. Just register, and then we'll even reach out to you. Register, put your email, your name, all that, so we can connect with you. And let's find out. I joined the class. I'm excited. Thank you, RCB22007. <laughs> you ain't cold, too. <laughs> Yo, I'm like, okay, militant. Okay. Oh, yeah, I see what I'm talking about. <laughs>